interview with Harry and Meghan airs here in the United States. How they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there's a magic role that the film is playing and perpetuating falsehoods about us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this edition of ours. We talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle with their tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey. First things first, join in the conversation using the hashtag viral here on Connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribers can tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing. As we talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, do the tell-all interview to Oprah Winfrey on the CBS network that they talked about everything. We talked about leaving the UK. We talked about Meghan's not being feeling uncomfortable, unhappy with her status as a royal. They talk about a lot of slew things. Let's get you to speed on what's going on with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle with their highly anticipated interview with Open Winfrey. Take a look. Of that interview, ABC's Julia McFarlane is in London. Tonight, Britain's Queen Elizabeth taking to television, hours before her grandson Harry and his wife Meghan would appear in an interview with Oprah. The Queen marking the annual Commonwealth Day. As we celebrate the friendship, spirit of unity and achievements of the Commonwealth. With a speech on the challenges of the pandemic. We have also taken encouragement from remarkable advances in developing new vaccines and treatments. But no hint of the family drama that everyone is talking about and taking sides over ever since Harry and Meghan quit royal life. The royal family, like all of us, is certainly going to be sitting down to watch this and waiting to see just how damaging these revelations are. Echoes of Princess Diana's revealing interview about her tense relationship with the family in 1995. Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Harry tonight drawing parallels with his mother's treatment by the media and his wife's. My biggest concern was history repeating itself, so I can't begin to imagine what it must have been like for her going through this process by herself all those years ago, because it has been unbelievably tough for the two of us, but at least we had each other. Well, Harry and Meghan may win some sympathy among Americans, but for... All right, there's a fallout between Prince Harry and Meghan, the highly anticipated interview with Oprah Winfrey, Oprah hold no bars, and she asked the questions that she wanted to ask. She even asked this question that what led Meghan Markle to talk to her when she wanted Meghan to talk to her, and Meghan dismissed it nicely. But Oprah gets into more details with Megan on that interview schedule. Take a look. I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there's a active role that the film is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. So all right there, a lot of the questions. Megan Markle talks about the UK, the royal family, but she calls it a firm did not want her to speak out and she wanted to speak out clearly on what she thought was her right as being a member of the royal family here um megan is a married member of the royal family first american to marry a royal that's she and the royals cannot get along with their issues and stuff well megan Markle received more backlash this week as many people was deem her as a bully let's look back and with the royal family issue that they about launching an investigation on Meghan Markle's behavior. Take a look. Meghan Markle claiming in the upcoming interview with Oprah Winfrey, she wasn't at liberty to have this conversation until now. So as an adult who lived a really independent life to then go into this construct that is um, different than I think what people imagine it to be. It's really liberating to be able to have the right and the, the privilege in some ways to be able to say yes. I mean, and, and to I'm say it to for talk. yourself. To say it for and yourself. And not to have to consult with anybody at this point. Yeah, to yes. be able to just make a choice on your own and just be able to speak for yourself. As Buckingham Palace braces for the marathon interview tomorrow night, the royal family taking heat for the decision to launch an investigation into claims that Palisade complained of bullying by Meghan. 
Harry and Meghan will not take part in the palace's investigation, but senior aides are expected to be questioned. Allegations published in the Times of London from one senior aide claiming the Duchess drove two personal assistants out of the household, while other unnamed aides accused her of emotional cruelty and humiliation. Friends of the Duchess outraged, leaping to her defense. Actress Janina Gavanka tweeting, she is kind, strong, open. She's not a bully. College friend Lindsay Roth posted, goodwill runs in her bones. I think when it comes to the monarchy in Britain, you've got to remember that they are taxpayer funded. They are a, a public servants, effectively. And I think there's an expectation here that they will be covered in a more critical way. Also in the Duchess's favor, a ruling from Britain's High Court. The Mail on Sunday ordered to publish a front-page statement declaring Meghan's victory against the paper over its publication of a letter she wrote to her estranged father. And you saw right there, the Royals are doing an ongoing investigation into whether or not Meghan Markle was being a bully to some of the Royal staff members, leaping to the tears, and Meghan Markle and her team saying it's not true. So we have to wait and see when the Royal family concludes. Let's hear what you people had to say about Harry and Meghan with this highly anticipated interview with Oprah Winfrey. What do you people think? Take a look. Well, I don't like. I'm not, I'm not going to say I hate her as I don't know her, but I don't like Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. How can I say about Meghan Markle? Meghan Markle had everything. Being over there in, you know, in, in the palace. <laughs> You're like a, a princess, basically. But you want to come back to the States and be a so-called independent woman and try to become an actress again and go on Oprah. And it's like, what are you thinking about? Like, you know what you're getting into when you when you become part of this family. Did you become part of this family to try and build your TV career? Like, you've ascended beyond this whole TV career thing you were trying to get. You, you went from being an actress, a star of actress in L.A., going to auditions, trying to make something happen at 30-something years old, a divorcee and all that good stuff, to now you're part of royalty and you want to go back and try to be part of LA again? Are you are you spoken? And then, Harry, like, are you a man or a mouse? What's going on with you, sir? I don't like them at all. I don't like them at all. I, what I expect tomorrow is a Robin Givens, Mike Tyson type interview. So you're going to dominate the conversation and he'll just be sitting there like, look him dopey in the face, but... I'm getting triggered. My whole point is, hey, if you have like a whole, a guy that could be the king of England, he could be the king of England one day, potentially. I know he's far down on the list, but that's a different story. The king of England, he's talking to, if you got that guy, you just do whatever he says and keep quiet. How about that? But I digress. We have a problem, bro. Okay, so we are getting a first look at Oprah's sit-down interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and the talk show queen doesn't hold back on the drama. Watch. There is no subject that's off limits. Almost unsurvivable. Sounds like there was a breaking point. My biggest concern was history repeating itself. You've said some pretty shocking things here. Wait, hold, hold up. Wait a minute. I mean, I can't even imagine wow. uh, being a young Harry, you know, losing his mother. And then to say, Tori, I was worried about history repeating itself. I just have to say this. Uh, the Earl of Spencer, this is uh, uh, Princess Diana's brother at the eulogy. He said this at the very end. He said, Diana means in Greek gods, it, it's the huntress. And in the end, Diana was hunted down and she was killed. And I never forgot that. And I, I think people kind of forget the com combination between Harry and her, the, his mother. She had zero. She had no one. The press was even worse. And they murdered her. I think there's some PCSD there that we are. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, ascribe because I'm not a clinician, but there's got to be a true phobia there. There's got to be some deep fear there. I'm really interested in this interview. I really want to sit down on Sunday and see what they're all about and just hear from their point of view. So I changed my mind about them, and Tori's right. The, the media has a big 
big part of his life. He lost his mother because of it, and now he's speaking about it. So it's very Jeff. I think you might be changing your mind, as am I, because we're no longer getting the media's narrative of who, who they are, but we're getting it directly from them. And this is the, like the first time that they kind of. He just sounded like a husband that was concerned about his wife, and that can be every man. And everything else we've seen of them has been in some embarrassing golden carriage or something. Like it's good to see somebody that's just like, hey, you're messing with my wife. We have a problem, bro. I really respect that. I <laughs> I respect that interview about not being able to have a personal conversation with Oprah alone, as well as how she feels liberated returning to independent life. What's your reaction to that? Is that kind of control typical of life in the royal family? Well, I'm a bit surprised by it. I mean, the reality is, of course, she would have been out to have private conversations. But if you're talking about doing an interview, you've got to remember that the British crown is not, it's not a part of showbiz world. You know, it's part of the British government. It's part of the democracy. And you wouldn't have the president, the first lady, the vice president all speaking on the same day, giving a, a major speech. So to say that she wasn't given a chance to speak is simply not true. I mean, she did a documentary over here with, a, with one of the networks and, um, and spoke quite freely and also had a platform to speak about all the issues she wanted to speak about from women's empowerment to uh, diversity to all sorts of areas so I think you know I was there witnessing it and watching her do it and got a very positive press so I think this is a little bit rewriting of history and uh, a little bit over dramatic. The British High Court also made a pretty major ruling requiring the Mail on Sunday to publish Meghan's legal victory on its front page. Have we ever seen anything like that before? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have. I mean, there have been apologies and, uh, to the Queen and other members of the royal family when the tabloids have got something wrong. Um, but I wouldn't be looking to... I think you might need your, your glasses to see the size of the apology. I don't think it'll be splashed across, across the front page, particularly when it's the day before and on the eve of this uh, major interview she's given about her private life. Robert Jobson for us. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I, I, I'm not too sure that uh, Meghan or Harry will be critical of members of the royal family. But if there is, yes, there could well be a response. Look, we saw uh, just a few days ago the palace responding to a Times report about bullying, bullying that mm. allegedly took place two years ago. And the palace responded in that they are going to be holding an inquiry and hoping that those who allege that they were bullied will participate in the inquiry. But will they uh, react to, to this interview? It depends what actually comes out of it. We can't yeah. preempt that. Yeah. Do you think this is um, for the souring the relationship between Harry and his family? I mean, we've, the, 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 the stuff we've already heard from Meghan about uh, how she couldn't speak her mind freely, she wasn't allowed to make certain choices. Do, do you think... This is going to be pushing Harry further away from Charles and William and his grandmother? Well, I'm not terribly sure how much further he can go. You know, he's, he, he's in Los Angeles. He's 5,000 miles away. Mm. The relationship is fractured. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Harry and William haven't spoken for ages. One is we can only hope that Harry will appear on the 1st of July in the UK when the supposed unveiling of the statue of Diana that both William and Harry commissioned more than two years ago. And it's, there's always expectation that he will be here. But July, you know, it's only middle of March, so July is a long way off. Anything can happen. Mm. But it is very sad that this relationship is fractured, and one can only hope that in the fullness of time, it will heal. And Diggy, we've talked about this before, but the timing of this interview, you know, Prince Philip just had heart surgery. I mean, the Queen's about to give the Commonwealth address. There, there are the leaks and stories and stuff going on all over the place. It's just, it's just all a bit of a mess, isn't it? Well, the timing is not good. The announcement that the interview was going to go out uh, was put out the day before Prince Philip went into hospital. You know, the fact that he walked in, there wasn't a great deal of concern. He said he was going in for observation for a pre-existing condition. It was learned over a week later that uh, he had a heart problem and he was moved to St. Bartholomew's Hospital. But only uh, yesterday he was moved back uh, to Edward VII Hospital. But, yeah, the timing is not good. But I don't believe for a moment that CBS are going to pull it unless something absolutely dramatic happens. And that doesn't look as though it's going to happen. It's probably no good timing with it. Well, exactly. Uh, it
What do you think they're going to talk about? And what do you think the palace would be most afraid of them talking about? Well, they're probably going to talk about probably high on the agenda, and Harry alluded to it in one of those teaser clips, uh, the press. Uh, he's very much bitter against the press, and that is the bone of contention. That's probably one of the reasons why they left the UK. So that's probably going to be high on the agenda. Meghan has alluded to not being able to make decision, that there are always somebody in the background making, making decisions for them. You know, when you join the firm, the royal family, you're joining an institution. The institution is there, safeguarded by the courtiers who are there to protect the institution and thereby protect the monarch. So what they don't want is people going off and doing their own thing without negotiating first with the household. It's a big household. You know, there, there are a lot of royals. And they don't want things to overlap with others. And I suppose she was alluding to the fact that uh, Oprah had asked for an interview before the marriage took place. And there was somebody from communications in the room while she was taking the call and, and said, no, it, it just can't happen. So the fact that she's now in, in Los Angeles, and she said in that clip, she's able to now make her own decisions. Well, I suppose she's, you know, she's happy that she's able to do that. But it's a very difficult institution to marry into. And it's, there's a lot to learn about it. And there's more to learn about it if you are from another country, mm -hmm. used to another way of life, and you're coming into the UK, which is totally different to everywhere else. And you've got to learn a new way of living. And that's very difficult to accept when you've been a free spirit. And my goodness, Megan has been a free spirit and done some jolly good work. But, you know, it... It, constitutionally, the royal family are not allowed to involve themselves with politics. And I think that is uh, that, that, that was probably one of the things that Meghan found hard to, to swallow. Meghan's detractors, of course, Dickie, say, you know, you married the wrong bloke. If you, uh, you knew what you were getting into, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. We've, we've had this conversation well, before. Yeah, the detractors, the detractors do say that. And, and, you know, I just wonder whether Harry really told her what she was getting into, told her about the organisation. He was very keen to get married. He was desperate to start his own family. He saw how happy his brother was, saw, you know, his brother's wife, Catherine, saw the children and wanted a bit of the action himself. And maybe he didn't fully brief Meghan as to what to expect marrying into the royal family. It is a tough institution, even when you work in it. There's a lot to learn, a lot of things you can do and a lot of things you can't do. These young kids falling in love, eh? Willy-nilly all over the place. Dickie, we, uh, we'll be watching the interview, of course, as, as you will, I'm sure, and we look forward to your reaction down the track. Thank you, sir. don't like Meghan Markle is not because she's older than Harry, not because she's been married before, it's because she is a bit black. They don't like that little tinge of blackness on Meghan and that is what has dominated public discussion. When on different levels. I think when it comes to leaks and oppo dumps against a subject, whether it's on talk shows, like it happens on this show, or in politics, you always have to ask, who is benefiting and what do people gain by making a specific subject look bad? Right now, they're trying to make Meghan Markle look really, really bad, including um, accusing her of wearing diamond earrings that were gifted her uh, by the Prince of Saudi Arabia after Jamal Khashoggi was murdered. And these are all facts that have been, I guess, known for, for many years. Why are they coming out right now. They're coming out right now because there's a big Oprah interview coming out that's probably going to make the palace look really bad. The question I have for Buckingham Palace is, why is Meghan Markle's earrings and her emailing early in the morning more important than Prince Andrew allegedly having sex with minors on Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island? Because that seems like a way bigger problem for you guys. And instead, you're focusing on her. And I think we can't ignore the elephant of the room that there's probably a racial angle to this. There's a lot of racism directed at this woman in a lot of different ways. She threatens a lot of people in the patriarchy in, in, in lots of different areas and it just looks like they are bullying her in the press and I am going to be sitting watching the entire two, inter two hour interview with Oprah this weekend. Right. Sonny, what's your thought on this? I'm going to be watching it too and I'll, I'll tell you, I mean it's, it, it's interesting because I think they are that concerned, the firm, the palace, the family, the royal family, they are that concerned about that Oprah interview uh, to dredge up some allegations from 
two and a half years ago that she allegedly bullied the staff uh, by, like Megan said, sending you know emails at 5 a.m. My goodness, um, ask any any person that works with me. I send emails at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 5 a.m. I, I would have had many cases against me <laughs> by now. If, if that's considered, uh, you know, criminal behavior, I, I just I'm I'm really shocked that rather than trying to um, mend this rift, rather than um, supporting uh, Megan and Harry, who I think removed his wife and his family from England because of the terrible racial hatred that was she was subjected to, and he didn't want history to repeat itself after what happened uh, to his mother with the media. Um, I'm just surprised that they haven't tried um, to even apologize for not protecting her more and instead uh, do this. It says a lot, uh, I think, about the workings of, of the royal family. Buckingham Palace saying uh, an investigation into Meghan Markle being abusive to palace staff was happening. So, Joy, what's your, your take on all this? You love the royals. I do. I do love, well, I love the British output of uh, fiction and history and mystery, yes. Um, well, you know, it's like this young woman versus the family that goes back to Henry VIII, okay, off with her head, that king. <laughs> I, no, no wonder she calls them the firm, because, did you ever see that movie or read the book by uh, John Grisham about, you know, with, uh, with um, Tom Cruise? If you go against the firm, they will make your life miserable. In that movie, they will kill you. In the, in, in in the British uh, monarchy, they will just make your life miserable. You better toe the line. Yes, let's look what happened to Diana. Same thing. Same thing. They do not like it when you go up against them. As far as Andrew, who is really a pervert, is concerned, um, he is their boy. He is their boy. This uh, this girl is his not blood. And I'm not even sure about Harry, but that's another story altogether. And the other thing I would say is, why would you... Th there's a lot of crap coming out of the... Uh, British tabloid, tabloids, and the royal family is not counteracting that, which is basically tacit approval, in my opinion. Uh, and why would you trust anything coming out of the Rupert Murdoch machine? All they do is lie for a buck. So I'm on uh, Team Meghan Markle. Okay, Sarah, what's your th thoughts about this? Uh, I don't want to hear about any investigations that don't involve Prince Andrew coming out of the palace and his connections to Jeffrey Epstein and his... Uh, affairs or, or actions with young girls and women. It's uh, the fact that there's silence there is also tacit consent. And I'm going to go ahead and beat the lawyers to it. I've got to say Prince Andrew has denied allegations. He had sex with an alleged Epstein victim and said he never witnessed any of the criminal contact that Epstein was convicted of or was accused of. But I stand by my answer until they investigate Prince Andrew. I don't want to hear about it. The latest in that brewing fight between Megan interview about not being able to have a personal conversation with Oprah alone, as well as how she feels liberated returning to independent life. What's your reaction to that? Is that kind of control typical of life in the royal family? Well, I'm a bit surprised by it. I mean, the reality is, of course, she would have been out to have private conversations. But if you're talking about doing an interview, you've got to remember that the British crown is not, it's not a part of showbiz world. You know, it's part of the British government. It's part of the democracy. And you wouldn't have the president, the first lady, the vice president all speaking on the same day, giving a, a major speech. So to say that she wasn't given a chance to speak is simply not true. I mean, she did a documentary over here with, a, with one of the networks and, um, and spoke quite freely and also had a platform to speak about all the issues she wanted to speak about from women's empowerment to uh, diversity to all sorts of areas so I think you know I was there witnessing it watching her do it and got a very positive press so I think this is a little bit rewriting of history and uh, a little bit over dramatic. The British High Court also made a pretty major ruling requiring the Mail on Sunday to publish Meghan's legal victory on its front page. Have we ever seen anything like that before? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have. I mean, there have been apologies and, uh, to the Queen and other members of the royal family when the tabloids have got something wrong. Um, but I wouldn't be looking to, I think you might need your, your glasses to see the size of the apology. I don't think it'll be splashed across, across the front page, particularly when it's the day before and on the eve of this uh, major interview she's given about her private life. Robert Jobson for us. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. A lot of you people are mixed, having mixed emotions. Even the British press 
on what's going on with Harry and Meghan. But it is what it is. We just have to see how this all plays out. Meghan and Harry did this for reportedly $7 million for CBS to do the interview with Oprah. So there's going to be some high ratings, some high stakes, some high criticism along with it. So we just have to wait and see how this all transpires. Thank you all for watching this edition of our We Talk About Prince Harry and Meghan Tales All. I've been your host, Kendra Dixon, saying so long. We'll see you next time for another edition of Vow.